So Miguel, so thank you very, very much for receiving us. A today. pleasure. Uh, I attended your class for one and a half. Okay, it was interesting. So what was the what was the class all about? Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you, Hubert, yeah. and, and receive you from MBA Center here at ESE. Uh, we just had the class with the Master in Management students, mm -hmm. uh, the last class in Operational Finance, okay. which is a course that we look into short-term financing, how to read a balance sheet, a PNL in a company. And this last class was about a distribution company that had to decide whether to go bankrupt or to dissolve the company. Yeah. And it's a, it's a case, really interesting case, where you have discussion between the students. As you could see in yeah, the class, yeah. they were fighting with each other, which is one of the great things that we have here at ESA, which is basically the case method. And what is the goal of the class? So basically to teach your students how to take decisions from financial statement? Exactly. So one of the things I tell them is that you go, if you do only analysis, then yeah. the analysis leads to paralysis. Yeah. So basically the goal of each class is to make a decision at the end yeah. of the class. So we build on some foundation blocks mm. and we give them the tools so that they can actually interpret a PNL and a balance sheet and then take decisions based on that. Okay. Yeah. And how long is the program, so the, the, the operation finance uh, program? How so we, are we have distributed the mastery management in yeah. five periods. Mm. It's a one-year program. And within each period, we have different courses. Yeah. So this operational finance course is within the second period here at, at the okay. main that goes from from the beginning of November to the end of December. Okay. And uh, so do you have like other uh, finance courses uh, in your class or is it the only one? You have like one in corporate finance? Uh? We have a very strong curriculum yeah. in, in finance actually yeah. at ESA. Because we, we start with financial accounting and, and capital markets. Mm -hmm. Then we go to operational finance and corporate finance where you mm -hmm. look at in operational finance, as I mentioned, you go to short-term financing. And then you go to long-term financing, which is valuation of companies, valuation of projects, M&As, etc. Once we are done with corporate finance, we have a distribution of several elective courses in finance, mm. which one is related to banking, the other one is related to restructuring. And we have an interesting course. I, I teach one course in fintech, where mm. we look into, into blockchain, Bitcoin, cryptos, everything related to open banking. And, and we have a course on investments and personal finance. So okay. overall, we have like a core courses in finance and then we have like electives that form a track in finance and the students get uh, finish them in very well equipped with the finance. Do you have an idea uh, of how many percent, the percent of students who have pure finance uh, career after, well, the DMI is pretty, very young, but usually what are your expectations uh, in terms so, of carrying finance? So normally we have a very diverse pool yeah. of students at the main. We have currently 78 students and they are interested in many things. Yeah. Uh, a group of them go into finance, into investment banking or, or something related to, to finance, to funds, private equity funds. Last year we have some people that have been working in, in M&A. They've gone to City in mm -hmm. London we have different career tracks related to finance. But it's not the majority of them. I could say perhaps it's like a 20% of the class that go into finance. So most of them, they will go into consulting probably or general management. Uh, exactly. So there is a track in consulting where they go to, to the big four in terms of, of consulting firms, BCG, McKinsey, Bain, or they go into finance, one of the top banks, or they go into the industry, uh, Amazon, healthcare, um, there are many industries in which they are actually working okay. right now. Yeah. And of course, for all of them, you need to understand numbers and what they mean. Exactly. Uh, so now, of course, for students, so they know about IAC because they see the name in the rankings. But yes. maybe the reason why I came uh, on campus and in the new Madrid campus is basically to give a, a flavor, a better idea of what IAC is all about. So basically, what is the, the, the exact story of IAC because it's a pretty recent school? So can you tell me more about this? Yes, so ESA is actually a school that was founded more than 60 years ago. It's in the, in the late 50s. Mm -hmm. It's the school that is born and is the first school with a full-time MBA in Europe. Mm -hmm. So the MB, our MBA is 60 years old. Yeah. Um, when the school started, it was basically meant to, to transform and, and give formation to leaders that are in the executive positions like CEOs of companies in Spain, it started with the textile industry in Catalonia and continue with many other uh, industries. Now, after that, soon after the school started, 
we started doing the MBA. Looking up to our big friend or big brother was Harvard Business School. And we learned there three things, basically. One is that professors have to be really well prepared and they have to be receiving a PhD from top institutions from the US and, and Europe. Second is we learn from them. It might seem a little stupid, but it's actually one of the things that we learn from them is to have the classes in this distribution of U shape where students can interact with each other. And the third one is basically the case method. Yeah. Most of our teaching in, in ESE, also the meme teaching, is case-based, which means that the students have to prepare the case very well, discuss it with teams, and afterwards they come to class. And then as you saw in class, there is a big discussion between them. It's not a lecture where they sit and then the professor tells them everything, but it's more like a conversation. And the more heated the discussion, the more you can actually get out of the class as a student. Okay. And uh, is it easy to teach uh, corporate finance from business case? You, 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 you don't want to give them like more like background information? Yeah, this is, this is a good question. Free. So yeah. within the different disciplines that mm. we have at ESS, some of them are very, very, very case method mm. oriented, like marketing, where you can actually discuss lots of things. And the other extreme would be financial accounting, where you actually have to learn the basics. Yeah. So in finance, we are somewhere in the middle where you have to give some foundation, you have to give some theory, but normally we give that in books so that they can read beforehand. But then when they come to class, it is very important that there is a decision that you have to make mm. so that they don't learn for the sake of learning, but they learn to make a decision. Okay, very good. So you mentioned the relationship with Harvard Business School. Uh, so do you mean that you, 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 you work on their cases, their cases only, you use, what is the relationship now with, with HBS? Is it Purely academic, is there a... Yeah, so we have, we have a very strong relationship yeah. with Harvard Business School since, uh, since the very inception of ESA. So when yeah. we started as a business school, we actually, the first founders of ESA went to Harvard and found really welcomed by, by the people at Harvard. And since then, we've had like a Harvard-ESA relationship that there is a, a committee that meets at least once a year. Okay. And then on top of that, we interchange a lot of cases. So we teach a lot of cases from Harvard here at ESA. In Harvard, they buy some of the cases at ESA. And we share very much having more than 90% of our teaching based on the case method. Okay. And uh, so is there a difference in the way you teach finance to MBA students versus MM students? What is the is Yeah, the there, is a bit, there is a big difference. Um, yeah. Because in the MBA, students have had already about uh, five to six years of experience. So even if their background is not finance, they have some ability to, to, to pick up different things from their experience to contribute to class. Whereas in the mean, because they have no experience, they have zero or one year of experience, they are very fresh and they mm -hmm. can capture things really quickly. But sometimes the interaction, they need a little bit more time for them to interact in class and contribute more because they lack that experience. Yeah. That's probably the thing. Uh, basically for our, uh, for our audience, uh, can you tell us about the main programs that you teach at, IES, at ESA uh, and uh, also how well ranked they are, all of them? Yeah, very good. So here at ESA we have two, two big kinds of, of, of branches of education. One mm -hmm. is executive education, which is for people that are already working in, in different companies and they do part-time, so they come once a week or twice a week, and this is programs that we call PMDs, Program for Management Development, AMPs, Advanced mm -hmm. Management Program. Those are non-degree programs, okay? They are groups of between 40 and 60 people, senior executives, etc. And then we have all the master's programs, and in the master's programs we have, in terms of age, we go from MIM, mm -hmm. which is Master in Management, that was started at ESA three years ago, that are 23, 24 years old, then we go to the MBA, full-time MBA, which we have an average age of 29 years old, with five to six years of experience. This is based in Barcelona, and it has already, as I said before, 60 years. So we have a lot of experience in the MBA teaching. And then we have programs that are um, executive MBA, which are Friday, Saturdays, which is for people that are working, and they come in the evenings on Saturdays, and on Fridays and mornings on Saturdays. And then we have a global executive MBA, which is for people that are actually working in different countries, different continents, and they have the full experience of, of having ESS program, not only in Madrid and Barcelona campus, but we have the experience in the New York, Sao Paulo uh, campuses and Munich as well. Okay, so 
Uh, I know that IEC has several campuses. You have one in Munich, uh, one in Sao Paulo, I believe, and one in New York. Exactly, and Madrid well. and Barcelona. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so what was the rationale when you have already so many campuses, you already established in Barcelona, uh, to establish a second campus in Spain? Yeah, so basically we have a lot of, we have a lot of um, local demand in Spain mm -hmm. in the sense that there is a lot of people between 28 and 40, 50 years old that they require, they need more education and they really want looking for it. Mm -hmm. And we have those in Barcelona and in Madrid. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of companies in Madrid, a lot of companies in Barcelona, and there is a lot of, a lot of education there. In terms mm -hmm. of international students, we have most of international students are based in Barcelona for the MBA and in Madrid for the MIM. And then we expanded to Munich and to New York to have a presence in the middle of Europe and to have a presence in the US. We are a little less known in the US, but now we are getting a lot of traction there because there are a lot of students coming to our programs in, in, in New York. And then we also offer the students that are in Madrid and in Barcelona exchanges, like one week international exchange program in which we have teaching in New York, in Munich and Nairobi. So we have international modules that enrich a lot our programs. Okay, so maybe me have it both, but for our, our students, so which one is the, is the bigger between uh, Barcelona and Madrid? The biggest difference? Yeah. So what is the, which one is the big, bigger of the two? And the bigger of the Madrid two in terms of, so in terms of, 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 of activity, there is yeah. more activity in the Barcelona campus as yeah. of today because we have six sections of the MBA, yeah. which is about 350 students per year, which yeah. is about 700 students of the MBA, plus the executive education. People working at ESA in Barcelona are between 400 and 500 people, mm -hmm. 100 full-time professors, plus all the staff and, and executive directors that we have in the campus. In Madrid, we are a little, a little less in number, mm -hmm. but the Madrid campus is growing a lot, specifically thanks to the, to the new building where we are right now. This is a new building, brand, brand new, we're with a huge auditorium, and we have a MIM uh, program that is actually growing, so there's a lot of activity here in Madrid as well with most of the activity in terms of business-wise and business-related is very focused in Madrid. By the way, do you, I have seen that the, 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 the auditorium today was packed. Huh? Yeah. So you have about 100 seats and yeah. you have close to 100 students. So uh, do, you, do you intend to, to develop the DMIM even, even further? Uh, yes. To, to bring it to 200 students or yeah, maybe you could have two classes? Yes, yeah, we, yeah that, that's the idea. Yeah. So. I, with the MBA, we started the small, and as people get to know ES and get to know the case method, the great atmosphere that we have here, the quality of the professors, they start to get more. They, they, we start to get more attraction, and then more people coming. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if in two, three years' time, we have 200 million students. Yeah, yeah, from you have two classes. Yeah, yeah we have yeah. no two or three classes or four classes. Yeah, you could have like two classes yeah, yeah. of 100 each. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, the. The, 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 the auditorium is uh, conceived to have uh, 100 students per class. Yeah, a That's little less, anyway, but yeah, close to 80. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, I don't know if you have seen, but uh, you're already in an emerging country because you have a campus in, uh, in, uh, in Brazil, but you intend to, to open something in an uh, in emerging country in Asia. You have a plan there where also there's a lot of uh, there's demand and MBA Center is today many uh, Indian company, uh, so do you uh, intend to open, I don't know, in India, in China, in yeah. Asia-Pacific? So we basically have had for many years with ESA in, in Asia a relationship with one university, which was yeah. which basically one of the top uh, business schools in Asia, which is SABES. Yeah. Um, in Shanghai? And in Shanghai, exactly. And then, so we have had exchanges with them, going there with the executive yeah. MBAs and with the, mass, with the MBAs. So there is a lot of relationship with them. Yeah. Then we have a lot of students that are coming from Asia to Barcelona and Madrid campus, both in the MBA and in the MIM. Yeah. So we have a lot of interest from, from Chinese students, mm -hmm. from Japanese students. We have a lot of Japanese students. Actually, I think one of the schools, business schools in the world with highest number of Japanese yeah. that is not in, in Japan. Um, we have from from Taiwan, students from Taiwan as well, and then some students from, from, from Southeast Asia, right? Singapore and, and, and Thailand, and also from India. So they, we don't have campus there, but we have a lot of presence there. We have mm -hmm. people working there in the small offices, and then we have students coming to, to Barcelona and Madrid, and they have a, a fantastic experience here. Well, basically, uh, DMIM 
the meme started like uh, two years ago. Yeah. Right? The, the second class that you have. So, uh, so of course, IEC is better known as a, an MBA school and a school for executive education. Yes. Okay? A bit like in SEAD, huh? yeah. somehow. So what is the rationale behind opening an, an MIM? Was it to follow the market? Uh, is it you want because you follow you want to follow a trend because you you want to develop your own philosophy and uh, on the pre-experience uh, business education? Yeah, the very good question. So we so far we've been doing MBA and executive education, but we feel from many people that are close to us that they are saying, why don't you give education for people that just graduated? Yeah. So we have in Europe this this change from Bologna, yeah. which is goes from from having an undergrad to having to having the necessity to do a master's on top of the undergrad. So we see in the market that there is a lot of people that finish architecture, that finish a law degree, that finish engineering degree, mm. that they are not equipped for the management world. Mm. And many of them don't want to do like law or don't want to be like a pure engineer, super technical. So with this plus one, which is the meme, we're giving them like a, a whole bunch of, of tools for them to to confront decisions much better. So it's really different some person that finishes an engineering degree than a person with an engineering degree after finishing the master in management. Mm -hmm. You will see, you saw before, right? But this is a one year program. Students, we make them work very hard, to be mm -hmm. honest. So they work very hard. They have three classes with meetings each day with cases to do. And then we have also communication scores. So they are equipped in, in finance, in the hard skills, in leadership, in the more soft mm. skills, communication, and we actually give them a lot of, of tools so that they can find a job. Okay. And tell me, uh, the DMBA program for a long time was a two-year program. Yes. Okay. And, uh, and now I know that you have shortened it to 16 months, and you can do it, uh, yeah. you can shorten it. Why have you decided to offer uh, like a nine-month program to free experience uh, uh, young professionals yeah. versus almost a two-year program to professionals who already have experience and who may need, may need uh, less, uh, less yes. Uh, studies. Yes, very, very good point. So when you have more experience, mm. you have better idea of what you want in the future. Mm. When you have no experience, you need the, the basic tools, right? And people more and more are demanding like, uh, like a program that is within one year so that they can after that year go directly to the, into the job market. So this is what we are offering right now. I don't know if in the future we might consider extending it. We're thinking of putting a period six with three more months. It depends on whether, whether the students are actually um, interested in doing that and both whether the companies require them to have like a little bit more foundation. But so far it's a squeezed in one year and it's pretty, it's pretty dense. So they, they, okay. they work a lot, yeah. Alors, like one month ago, I interviewed Lisa Duke, who created yeah. the, the meme at London Business School, which yeah. is also one-year program. Yeah. So basically, we tend to see that today, uh, meme programs are one year, one year long, okay? Yeah. In SEAD, you, LBS, yes. okay? Uh, how have you built the program? Have you uh, discussed with alumni, with recruiters, with students? How have you built your market research? Yeah, very good. So we talked to different people, right? And then because we were very good and we are very good top in the world in the MBA, we thought, okay, let's see um, how, can we, how can we apply this, this design to, to a younger generation, okay? To like six years before. Mm. So we talked to alumni to see what they were equipped. We have a lot of alumni with, with children that are in the age of, and then many times they come and they say, there is no program for my kids or something. So we see that there is a lot of demand there. And, and in terms of the curriculum, we already have a, a very strong curriculum mm. from the MBA. So when we teach finance, we are teaching them a case method as well, right? Yeah. We adjust that to a, like a younger, but, but we are giving them the content. So that, that's the idea. But is yeah. for you an MIM, a meme, a junior MBA, or it is a, a, a degree on its own? No, it's a degree on its own. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's a degree on its own, yeah.
Of course, I don't think someone doing the meme would do the MBA three years mm. later, right? Yeah. But I think that many people don't consider doing an MBA, but they consider getting, getting management yeah. education right when they finish undergrad. We see so many people out there when they are 29, 30, 31 years old that they say, I don't want to do an MBA because I don't want to interrupt my career mm. now that it's going well. What we are doing is equipping those young people with these tools so that they don't have to interrupt their career afterwards. Okay. Uh, I imagine that you're pretty ambitious for the program. The MBA is ranked in the top five in the Financial Times. Yes. Uh, you expecting a similar uh, ranking as well? Yeah. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> We are working towards giving the best program for students and, and working working yeah, for the, the best. Idea. Anyway, that's the idea. If IDC has launched a program, it is to be exactly. in the top ten uh, exactly. uh, rapidly. And if okay. we are in, in if we are top 20 or top 30, we will keep working so that yeah, to bring it to the to the top ten. Yeah. MBA Center, by the way, already ranks. The main program in the top 10 uh, in the world, along with uh, HEC, ESSEC, uh, ESCP, uh, uh, INSEAD, uh, LSC, Imperial, basically yeah. League One. Uh, yes, okay? yes. Uh, League One in the world. Uh, so basically, uh, how do you qualify? Of course, it's, uh, I could tell today that there were very bright students from the question that they were asking you. Uh, what is the admission process at your school? So we have, several, we have several, several rounds of mm. admissions. So students first apply online mm. and then we get in touch with them so that they have to provide a GMAT or an ESA test where, where they show that they have enough capabilities for that. We have like a, this is a threshold, right? And then very important at ESA, we never admit a student or reject a student without doing a, an interview with them. So we want to, We first, we first have the numbers, we first have the transcripts and we have the GMAT and everything, but then we want to see them face to face, to see their experience, to see what are their attitude towards the program, to see what are their, you know, their background, and then, and then explain to them a little more about the essay. And after the interview is when we decide whether we admit them or tell them that perhaps it's not their best, uh, the best place for okay. them. So that's also something that our students uh, have Uh, it's a question because it's usually a question that is asked in, intervie in interviews. Yeah. So basically you told me that you have structured the program in five periods. Yes. So period one to period five. Exactly. Uh, I, mean, I mean five periods of two months each. Okay. Yes. So why uh, not per semester, per quarter or per semester, uh, like the US program do? Uh, why have you adopted uh, uh, a five period? Uh, so one of the reasons for five periods is that um, you get the students very much on the edge of the seat. Mm -hmm. So when you do like one semester, you think, oh, exams are gonna come in four months and it's too far. When you do every, every a period of like six to seven weeks, eight weeks, mm -hmm. means that the students are learning, they're moving fast and they, you know, they, they learn to be working on a daily basis all the time without having seen, like, seen the exams too, too far away. By the way, you know that it's, this uh, uh, system comes from the Netherlands. Yeah. It's a Dutch system, okay. very, very short, uh, very short, very short system. Okay. Usually, I think in the Netherlands, I think it's, it's six weeks okay. from what I remember. Okay. So at Maastricht, uh, UVA, VAU, you have okay. this type of, uh, okay. of program. And uh, yes, you have like f five weeks of class, one week of exam and every, yeah. uh, uh, which is, yes, it's a way for students to, yeah. to learn, which is not the Belgium system, for instance, yeah. where you have per semester, yeah. you have exam twice a year only. Yeah. But uh, I, get, I get the idea. So, uh, what have you planned for the future of the program? Like research centers, having new professors, new initiatives? Yeah, so we have, so we have a, a, this new campus here in Madrid. So we, it's an old campus already, but we have a new building, like one that you see here, and this is, this is gathering now more interest. We have the Global Alumni Reunion of ESA that gather more than 5,000 people, 1,000 presentially and 4,000 online had great speakers there. Um, our idea with this campus in Madrid and with the MIM is to be in the top league of the MIM, basically forming the best students. We have a transformational program that we believe in, that everybody that comes to ESA, then they, when they leave ESA, they say, wow, that was really good, I was not expecting this. And it's an experience that is not just academic, where you learn things in class, but it's the way that you work in teams, the fact that you have a team mentor, the fact that you can access the faculty easily, 
the fact that the staff, not just the staff like managing the programs, but the staff at the cafeteria and everywhere, they are very friendly. So you have kind of a family atmosphere that drives you to be not only a better student, but also a better person. Mm -hmm. And we believe in that. Towards the future, as I mentioned before, we want to grow the MIM, so we will eventually have 150, 200 students in the MIM that can go through this transformational program. Back, so on the side of that, when you grow the MIM, we will also grow the number of professors that we have here in Madrid. And professors that teach in the MBA programs and in the MIM programs, we normally devote a lot of time to research. So right now, we have several research centers at ESA, and one specific research center that we are starting right now is a center for research in credit and debt markets. So we have two big funders that are actually helping us to set up the center in terms of giving good donations with that. And then we are going to study everything related to private debt in Europe. This is not something that we are going to teach students directly in one of the courses in the core, but we will do an elective on that and that enriches the faculty. That helps us as ESA um, have a conversation with the financial institutions in Europe in general. So we have a lot of relationship with the top banks in Spain, with the banking authority in Europe, so we can be in the conversation as we have been uh, in the last 10, 15, 20 years. Okay. So what piece of advice would you give to students who are considering your meme? So, um, what should they well, apply? So my, my, my recommendation is come and see. So the, I, think the, I think, at least for me and for what I understand is the best way to know something is mm -hmm. to talk to the people that are there and to talk to the people that have, have gone through a program. So the best thing you can do is contact a MIM student from last year, from this year, from two years ago, and ask them about their experience. And then come and visit us. And once you're here, you will see lots of things. And then if it matches what you want, then you would be happily staying here. If you think you want to be in the US, then you can go to the US. I mean, we are, we are for freedom here, but at the same time, many of the students, they don't know what ESA is until they come here and then they see the place. They see the place, they talk to the people, and they fall in love. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Miguel. Yeah, it was a, thank you very much. A pleasure, a, Ube, nice to be with to, you. A pleasure. Talk to you and to see uh, someone who is so enthusiastic, so knowledgeable, so talented, uh, running uh, the show. Thank you. Thank you.